everyone and welcome back to my channel. First and foremost, I want to thank the 1,000 plus of you who have subscribed to my channel and have stayed with me since I started um, making these videos. And um, I'm so thankful for your kindness, your your likes, um, your subscriptions, obviously. And, and I'm so excited to put on more content for you guys. Um, Excuse if I sound a little bit rough. I'm getting over a cold. My whole family um, has been sick for like a week now, so I'm I'm like trying to have energy. Uh, I had a video go up about starting a blog, and since that video went up, um, I've had people request um, just you know about blogging. So I'm gonna have a mini blogging series here on my channel and over on my actual blog and um, it'll cover just basic topics. The first video will be about blogging supplies and planning your content. The second video will be about blogging essentials and the last video will be um, blogging tips to help you uh, be a more successful blogger. If Okay, so blogging supplies. You would want, now this is like a list of things. You can condense it to whatever you feel will fit your needs, but number one, um, a planner. A planner is great to organize the timeline of your work. You can set aside dates and times to successfully carry forth your idea. Number two, a notebook. A notebook is essential, big or small, your choice. A notebook is essential to basically draft your ideas. Number three, sticky notes. You want sticky notes for ideas, reminder, and just little notes. Number four, page flags. I use page flags in books, magazines, wherever I'm drafting ideas from, um, I'll usually mark it with page flags. Number five, a notepad. A notepad is great. Um, this is a quick target uh, for notes. If something catches your eye while you're surfing the web or if an idea hits you quickly, you can just jot it down and just be kind of like a a brain dump and then you can transfer all of that onto your notebooks where you will actually plan your content. Pens obviously, um, but you can use pens if you're comfortable with color coding to color code your planner. For example, you can write um, brainstorming would be a certain color, uh, writing content will be another color, you know, social media could be another color, just different things that you need to do. You can assign different color pens and have it all laid out in your planner. I also recommend you use a whiteboard. Uh, this can be up to you if you want to have um, a calendar whiteboard. I have it just because it I can visually see at a glance in my office, look at my posting schedule, what's to be done, and and it's, you know, obviously it's magnified, so it helps me a lot. And this isn't for everyone, but an inspiration board is always a good idea just to have, trying to take, so we have different kinds of bloggers, right? We have bloggers that have blogging as a career, as a hobby. Um, if you want, if you're more like a spontaneous blogger, you probably don't need to tune in into everything I'm talking about because it's it's completely up to you what you do but if you want to take your blog somewhere and maybe want brands to find you um, or to work with brands uh, numbers do matter views matter um, friends matter uh, it's uh, it's all a numbers game so depending on where you want to take your blog obviously you would take um, from the information that I give you so planning your content Draft, research, and seek inspiration. This is the part in your planning where you are pulling ideas and making something out of them. The title is very, very important. That's what's going to make a person want to click, you know, whether or not your content is worth reading. Unfortunately, in the blogging world, I feel at least that um, people do judge by the cover. Um, so to speak, you need to have a title that convinces your audience that, you know, your subject is worth reading. 
from your scribbles and um, the information that you've gathered, you can begin to compose. So here, you want to make sure you cite your work if you um, have pulled ideas or maybe photos from another blog or a site. You always want to credit. And in writing your content, I would highly suggest you keep the word count uh, between 230 words um, and leave out the fluff. Just stay informative, stay to the point because people get overwhelmed with a lot of text. Um, a great tip is to use uh, numbers or bullet points um, listing forms to give information because it's easy to read and it doesn't overwhelm uh, the reader. This might be just as important, if not more than a title. Um, usually when you you know, publish a blog on social network today, social media today. For example, if you post it through Instagram or through Twitter, you will be able to see the title along with the photo at the same time. You want that photo to be uh, convincing. You want it to have good quality. It doesn't necessarily have to be a photo you have taken, but again, if it is not, your photo you give credit to the site that you took it from if your photo was from pinterest cite pinterest on there um, and if you have the actual person that took the photo even better so because we are visual creatures a good photo is great because it can help us determine in seconds whether we want to click on it or not so it's very important this is when it is um, important, if you're not a spontaneous blogger, if you don't blog, you know, just every, if you have a blogging schedule, which is what I highly recommend, if you want to take your blog somewhere, I definitely recommend you have a, a posting schedule. So for the, for the editing aspect of it, there's no excuse for poor grammar, you know, bad spelling. You want to make sure um, when all of your content is written before publishing that you go through your content and see that you haven't misspelled anything, you know, everything is where it's supposed to be. For this is becoming your brand, this is going to represent who you are. After you edit, I recommend you just save it. Don't publish right away. Um, I say publish it tomorrow or have it in that schedule. Maybe the next day, you know, you might want to add some information or take something out that you, basically it's like sleeping on your work, you know, take out whatever you feel doesn't apply or if you feel that something else is a little bit better to include in your post then you can do that. So schedule is always a good idea because you have um, you're basically giving your audience a direction um, and when to expect you so um, I would say if you are blogging for real for real like um, you should have at least, you know, two to three posts per week. If you go full time, then that'll be Monday through Friday are the best. Blog two days a week, I would suggest Monday and Wednesdays just because statistically that's when the highest um, blogging traffic is. Um, and definitely during the morning or noon, any content after 3 or 4 p.m. is dead content. Those are my little tips for planning your content and head over to my blog for this. I will link my blog at the end of this video and I will also link it below. So make sure you check out that post. It coincides with this video. Um, so thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next video which will consist of blogging essentials. In blogging essentials, I will cover basically everything that I believe um, your blogging page should have in hopes of having a better viewer or reader experience. So um, I hope that you will be back for that. Thank you for watching. Bye.